going to talk about Stack and Whack. Um, the technical difficulty that we're having today is my Stack and Whack books sold out at Shop Hub. So <laughs> I have some more on the way and um, I was hoping they would be in the box that came in today and of course they didn't. So um, we're just going to talk about them because I'm only showing, I'm showing you a technique, but I'm showing three books. So um, we're just going to talk about what's in the books because I think you're going to dig them. So today what we're going to talk about is stack and whack. Um, stack and whack is an older term. The original book for doing that technique came out in 1998. So we've been doing stack and whack for a while. There's lots of patterns out there that use that technique and different variations of that technique. The way I'm going to show you today is the easiest, simple, straightforward concept part of the stack and whack. Next month, I have a video scheduled for next month where we're going to talk about a little bit more like hexified, where you're going to make, use triangles instead of squares. So things are going to be a little bit more, um, I don't want to say difficult, just if you learn it this way first, then the other way is just a piece of cake. Okay. So I'm not going to give you measurements or anything because the patterns are in the books. And I am a big fan of copyright. So we're just going to talk about some tips on getting your stack and whack to line up and everything to go really straight. Um, but the books that we're talking about today, one of them is super easy and straightforward and one of my favorite ways to do this technique. The next one is just slightly harder just because it, um, there's some bias in there. And then the third one is the hexified version, which um, takes to a whole nother level, okay? Okay, so what I have, we started with the Karen's Garden Border Stripe Fabric, which essentially is a four strip repeat. So here's the selvage and there's the selvage. So it, the stripe repeats four times. I love using a striped fabric for this technique because you can get some really cool effects, okay? So, I've already cut nine inch squares. The book will show you how to line these up so that they line up just right. There's some really basic tips. My favorite way to line these up, and since they're already square, this, uh, this part is, is fairly simple. I'm gonna take a pin, I've got four layers of fabric. I'm gonna take a pin. I'm gonna find a sort of centralized point in my fabric. So let's say we use the point of this fern right here, okay? We're gonna stick the pin in the point of the fern on all four fabrics. What this is doing is taking the repeat of the fabric and lining it up on top of each other, okay? Um, I kind of did this when I cut it out so that they would line up pretty straight. Um, for this particular technique, the way I'm showing you right now, it's not imperative that everything line up exactly the same. But this is a really easy way to line up your prints so that you have at least a single reference point where they're all lined up. With this particular block, I would probably do this well, twice. And again, because of the way we're gonna do this particular technique with this particular fabric, having it lined up exactly to the point or to the dot isn't quite as, as crucial. Okay, but I just wanna show you this trick. So I lined up the points of the fabric on that same little dot of the fern. So then I'm gonna take this pin and I'm gonna rock it back down. And so now I know, see how straight the edge is there? And I know that all my fabric lines up in that singular point, okay? So that's just a little tip for getting your squares to all line up exactly the same, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, well, I'll pick up that pin later. I'm gonna take my squares and I'm gonna cut them on the diagonal. This is a different trick uh, for doing a striped print stack and whack. Okay, so I've got my squares lined up. Now mind, this is after you line up the print and you cut your squares out, okay? So I've got my stacks all lined up together. I'm gonna take my ruler here. Where's my favorite ruler? 
And I'm just gonna cut this on the diagonal. That ruler's not long enough. Okay, so we're gonna cut an X through these. This is where you're going to end up, you know, kind of sewing on the bias. Don't worry, it'll be okay. And I'm gonna show you why in a second, okay? So these are nine inch squares that we're gonna cut an X through. Now, the reason I really like using a striped print, especially a Jason Yenter striped print like this one, is because Jason does something with most of his striped print that makes you just look really good. And I'll point that out here after I cut this. Do you see how he's got a reference in his print that is a straight, a straight stripe? But see how the flowers go over those straight lines? That is a really nice buffer zone so that when you're putting things together on the diagonal, everything doesn't have to line up perfectly. I love that he does this with his stripes and you'll see how that works in just a second. So what I did was now I have four sections of fabric that all looks the same, all right? Pretty easy so far, right? So I'm gonna take, let's just choose one. We're gonna take this one. Now if I take these four pieces of fabric and I kind of fan them out, look at the coolness that happens. So now what I have, see how the, see how I was talking about these board, these flowers kind of hang over that straight line which means if this point of your stripe right here doesn't line up exactly, nobody's gonna know. But look at that really cool design that just happened here, okay? So you end up with this four part mirrored design, okay? Now, all I'm gonna do is take these two triangles and line them up and these two triangles and line them up and I'm gonna sew this seam and I'm gonna sew this seam, okay? So let's go do that. So you're just gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. A couple of tips on this. Start with the straight end, not the triangle end. Use a quarter inch foot. And you're just gonna sew your seam all the way off the end, okay? And I wanna make sure I've got the right one here. Does that go the same way? I'm just gonna do this with one block so you get the tips up, the tips for this. Now one of the things that you never learn on sewing videos is how to press a block so that you get good results. I'm gonna take both of these blocks and stack them on top of each other. And you'll see why in a second. If I set my seam of these blocks going the same direction and press them going toward the same side. Okay, so there's one. And there's two. You'll notice I set my seam before I pressed it open. Okay, so now when I take this block and I turn it around, I got this really groovy square, right? And when I flip these over, see how my seams butt up to each other? If you stack your blocks on top of each other and press them all the same direction the first time, when you go to flip them together and sew them, they will be opposite facing seams, which will give you a really nice flat seam right there. I'm gonna sew this seam together. This is all pretty easy stuff so far. Make sure we get this side lined up. All right, now when we come to press this one, we'll do the same thing. We'll set our seam, because setting your seam makes for good patchwork. And then here's a, here's a pressing tip. Just take your iron. You'll notice that I set the seam flat from the outside. The steam's giving me a facial. Um, just take the fabric and lay it down. Don't pull on it, just lay it down. And then let the weight of your iron Press the seam. 
Pressing and ironing are two different things. We are not ironing, so we are not trying to get wrinkles out of a shirt. We're just trying to get this seam to lay flat, okay? So there's no pulling, there's no tugging. You just wanna press everything flat. Now, look how cool that is. Isn't she pretty? So you have this sort of floating box in the center here and these really pretty peonies around the edge, okay? Now, the last step that I did with this block was I used an eight inch ruler my Quilter Select rulers have a 45 degree X in the center, which is really nice for squaring up a block. So this is an eight inch um, ruler. I'm gonna take my 45, see, I know my writing's in the way, but see that little 45 number right there? That is right in the middle of my two diagonal seams. And my 45 degree reference line goes down this seam, the other one goes down this seam, okay? And then we're simply going to square this block up. I am not a huge fan of squaring up patchwork unless I'm doing it on purpose. This particular style of sewing, I do this on purpose because then I know that I have a really perfect block at the end. So I cut my blocks just a little bit bigger than I wanted them to end up so that I could trim them down like this. Okay. So now look at how pretty our block is. So now out of the rest of those, you can take this. So here's here was our other stack of squares we cut apart, right? So we're just gonna take and fan them out. And out of that same square of fabric, you're gonna end up with all these different designs. So this one looks like this when it's sewn together, okay? Then you've got this one, so the border print is a little bit off to the left, and it's gonna give you this really neat basket weave style. Okay, so that looks like this one when it's all squared up and trimmed. Look at how pretty all those flowers flow over that edge. Okay, and then, the, so now we have two of this one. So this is what this one looked like before I trimmed it. And I cut this one out of a slightly different section of the rectangle, of the stripe. So see how, di even though they're the same square print in the middle, look how different the blocks are because I cut them in a different section of the stripe. Okay, but they still spiral out like that. Isn't that cool? It's like fussy cutting, but it's not. It is, it's like, it's like anti-fussy cutting. Yeah. It's like the opposite of that, but you end up with this really amazing sort of kaleidoscope design. And since it's just four, it just sort of goes together really easy. So here's the last one with the mostly white background. Isn't that You're cool? Also not wasting all the fabric you wasted fussy cutting. Right. You're not really throwing away anything, except for when I cut apart the border stripe, I cut about that much of the background fabric away because that's the size of block I want. Now this is how you do the square and then you cut it in the diagonal twice. You can also, so I took some scraps of when I was playing around and I just sewed together squares. So this is just four squares sewn together and I took the, the little ferny bit and turned it on all four points so that it spiraled out. This is the easiest of the stack and whack style because it's literally just squares and you take the square and you turn it 90 degrees all the way around. This is just a four, I think this was a four inch square. This was a three inch square. And look at how that makes this weird sort of like spinning wheel in the center, okay? So you're not really wasting anything. But this is why I like to use a border stripe when I do um, stack and wax style because you get these really neat um, secondary designs that happen, this is not hard. All, if you buy a really pretty fabric, the fabric does all the work for you. That is how you do a very basic stack and whack. Like I said, there's one Monday in September where I'm going to show you how to do hex seed stack and wax, but the books that I chose to share with you today, the first one is called The Easy Stack and Whack. And what that book is about is it starts with this element right here, this square element, okay? 
That's why it's called the Easy Stack and Whack. And what I love about that is there's some really pretty designs in that book that take, so say you start with this as your center square and then you log cabin around it. Or you take this as your center square and you sash it or you make a border print with it. You make a, um, a pieced border with it. But if you take that border stripe, oh, I thought I had the bolt. Um, if you take that border stripe and chop it up in different sections of the stripe, not only do you get this really neat effect, but even if you move this three inches along and cut three inch squares, you're gonna end up with a different pattern all the way along that stripe, which is pretty cool. Okay, so number 801 is the easy stack and whack. If you've never done this technique, that is very much the book I would start with. It shows you how to line things up and it shows you how to do this very, very simple step in the math that goes with it. The second book that I have to show you is, well, I should show you that one last, but the next one that's on the list is the stack and cut hexagon quilts. That is one that moves you into those uh, triangle shapes. But what I like about that particular book is it almost looks like English paper piecing. So it shows you how to do strip sets. So you don't have to start with a stripe fabric, but you sew strip sets together and then you cut your triangles apart so that when you sew them together, they make these really neat secondary designs. Okay, so that book is number 802. Number 803 is the original OG stack and whack book. The one that I was talking about comes out, came out in 1998. It's probably one of the longest in publication quilting books that I know of. Um, people still love it. People still use it. It's the thing that created the idea for the one block wonders and all of those other patterns too. That one, that book starts with these shapes and you sew, you sew together triangles and strips and you make these really amazing sort of spinning wheel um, kaleidoscope type blocks. Again, they're gone out of the shop now because of Shop Hop, but they should be here tomorrow. So um, I would highly recommend if you love that stack and whack design, um, the first book I showed you, the easy stack and whack uses the squares, the magic stack and whack uses the triangles. The stack and cut hexagon quilt uses, tri uses um, equilateral triangles, so it makes a completely different design. All right. So that's what I had to show you today. Super easy stack and whack that anyone can do. If you need some really good stripe print fabric, I have loads of it. This is the one I would start with. It's available on my website. It's the Karen's Garden Border Stripe Fabric. Um, because it has a really interesting motif and you have that great basket weave stripe in there that Jason gave us to work with, this fabric is just gonna make you look good. And if you love a hydrangea, this fabric's gonna make you really happy anyway. Okay, so this is a really good fabric to start with. Um, any border stripe fabric really though that has a nice wide border stripe is gonna be the thing to try this out on. All right, so that's what I have to show you guys today. That was easy. Wednesday's sale is gonna be quilt kits. So I have some kits that um, we have one or two of left that we're trying to make room for new things that are coming in. And so we will see you Wednesday at 4.30 for that sale. And then since I've been slacking on Angie TV for the last three weeks, I have loads of fabric to show you on Friday. All right, so I hope you guys all have a really nice week. I will see you later. Bye.